Good evening and welcome back to Africa News Network First Fast Alive. My name is Cindy Mabi. The registration process for the 2019 elections begins this weekend and the dates for the general elections have not been announced as yet. But political parties have already switched to election mode. The governing party was the first off the block with their election workshop over the weekend and the economic freedom fighters also kicked off their voter registration drive on Sunday. The Democratic Alliance has also started doing the groundwork for next year's national elections. And as the strategic planning and footwork begins to convince voters, these are the challenges the leading parties seek to address. The ANC is looking to restore its image and voter base that has taken a beating as seen in the last municipal elections. And the DA's greatest challenge will be to make further inroads in the black electorate and remain appealing to its traditional voter base. And Julius Malema's fighters have to grow beyond just being the third largest party and work on their image. The campaign goal is to ensure decisive victory for the ANC. And uh, we're not chasing two-thirds majority. I hear people talking about two-thirds. ANC doesn't talk about two-thirds. ANC talks about overwhelming victory, which is going to come from our hard work and engaging with our people. We don't take our people for granted. And uh, it is not a given that uh, the ANC will get this majority. Not at all. We've got to work hard, address the concerns of our people. That is why our research says that we must deal with perceptions of corruption. It is not for us to argue with our people about whether or not we are perceived to be corrupt or not. It is the action that we are going to take about some of our members who might be implicated in corrupt activities. What is our attitude? President Cyril Ramaphosa has called on all South Africans, irrespective of age, to visit their voting stations to register. And voting stations will be open between 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. over the weekend. Fellow South Africans, the journey to the sixth general election has started. We all have a responsibility as South Africans to play our part in strengthening our democracy and building an ever better and prosperous South Africa. This starts with registering to vote. This weekend, the 10th and the 11th of March, all voting stations will be open for new voter registration and for those who are already registered to check and update their details. I especially urge you, young people, to register so that you may play your own part in defining your future. If you are 17 years old and above, or will be voting for the first time, go and register. If you have moved from one place to another, go and register as well. If you have moved from one part of your township, your suburb, or a rural area, go and register. If you have voted before, you can also verify your details on the voters' roll by SMSing your ID number to 32810. Home Affairs offices will be open this Saturday and Sunday. I urge you to go and collect your ID to register to vote. In this, the year of Nelson Mandela, let us deepen democracy and public participation in the affairs of our country. It starts with registering to vote. And joining us in studio, Edward Mitole, political analyst. We have um, Paul Matebola, political analyst via Skype. Tabo Mutle, ANC Youth League NEC member on the phone line. Siso Mathango, group political editor in studio. Good evening, gentlemen, and thanks so much for joining us. It, it really just feels like it's been a continuation of 2017 with all the developments there. Mm -hmm. Before we know it, we're going to, to the polls again to vote. If you were to assess uh, the groundwork, the strategic um, press conferences at etc. of the parties, how would you gauge them? I'll start with you very briefly, Sviso. Well, I think it's a continuation from 2016, from the, the August 3rd elections, the municipal elections, uh, that brought us the, the rivalry 
and the marriage, you know, the, un the inconcerted or uh, incor incorporated marriages between uh, the different ideological parties, the EFF and the DA in a strange move in, in Joburg, Nelson Mandela Bay, the city of Tane. Uh, you know, that was not expected and it happened. And some of the municipalities had done really well. Some are still under challenge. Uh, Athol Trollip is probably out as the, uh, the EFF leader has declared yesterday. So I think it started there. In 2017, you know, epitomize that with fights being taken to the constitutional court, uh, landing in the resignation of President Jacob Zuma because of the, 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 the factions and the fightings of the ANC that took itself to parliament. We are now about a year before the 2019 elections, and I think the, the top leading parties, the three parties, the ANC, the DA, and the EFF, have all got to work. The, the ANC, however, in this case, has got to work to redefine itself, to show society that they are still the radical party of Chris Arney and uh, Oliver Tambo. The DA must also be the anti-racist party. They must be a party that appeals to young black people. And the EFF has got to show South Africans that they are not just toddlers screaming in parliament, but they are people ready for government. So all these parties have got to take some form or shape sort of resembling the other party but a lot of movement has to come in the top three leading political parties in this country yeah and, and, and it all leads it's indicative of a maturing democracy if you were to think back in 1994 there were all sorts of parties that just emerged the kiss party the Dacha party the soccer party all sorts mm -hmm. of things we're seeing new players and we believe that the black first the land first have made their way onto the ballot paper so it's all good because it is more choice for the voter but it's in how um, the, the parties position themselves in the greater interest of the majority of South Africans. Uh, your view, Mr. Matole, whether the ANC can have the decisive victory, as we hear from uh, uh, Minister Akhafigile Mbalula. The people who still have trust and faith in the ANC must hold the ANC accountable in the understanding that Amandla Awe too. Matla Arona, power to the people. So it's, it's a big challenge for the ANC to be able to win the masses back again after what has happened in the past two years. This is a theater of politics. It's a theater of politics because we know that uh, the, the elite class of rulers who have been hired to hypnotize the black masses and numb us into believing that political power without economic power is real freedom, have to come to the party and convince the masses that we are going to deliver economic power alongside political power. So it is a very challenging time for the ANC. Is it, is, it, yes, is, is the uh, ANC a leader of society still, as it claims, and uh, the fact that in its 106 years, it has the machinery, it's got the know-how and the experience to govern, but of course, economically, we are still disenfranchised. Is it in a position, in your view, with the radical economic transformation talk, uh, able to restore that sense of confidence in the party? Well, I, I, I disagree with some uh, speakers and political scientists on the ANC sort of reclaiming its power from the people on what has happened to the ANC. And I often have to ask people, what has happened to the ANC? Because in 2014, I think the ANC won and they won well, and they are still the leader of society. Now, there's a narrative that's perpetuated in media called propaganda. The ANC has fallen, the splits in the ANC, the party has died. But the polls in 2014 showed a different thing. And maybe they will once again in 2019. And I think as society, we must be careful of the Twitter feeds and what uh, people say, uh, you know, around this country to be indicative of the ANC that might not necessarily be true. I think when you study the dynamics and the voter dynamics in this country, the people who vote for the ANC are not Twitter users. They're in the homesteads. Basem Shabuya Lingana, Enkandla, Everina, Empumalanga, you know, Emalasene Siabuso. 
those places are where the voter majority is. And perhaps that's why they lost in the city of Joburg and the city of Tswane, because they don't have a voter majority anymore, because it's still a very strong party at the grassroots. Uh, and now the, the EFF coming along with, you know, the Twitterati really minister to their, their voter market because they've studied that intrinsically. The DA, however, has got to also convince young black women, uh, young individuals in this country, not just the affluent, but also those in the homestead to say, we are not the NNP or the reincarnate of the National Party. We're a party for all people uh, in this country. I think we must understand that uh, People in this country vote for different reasons. Some people vote for a black party simply because they're black. Some people did not vote in 2016, not because they hated the ANC, but they didn't vote because they didn't necessarily have a choice. Some people voted for the EFF to teach the ANC a lesson. Some people voted for the DA because they were fed up with some reasons. So there's a lot of reasons why people vote and I think we need to study that. Yes, and Mr. Understand Mitchell, the we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you in a bit. And Paul Matebola, political analyst, has been very patient. And we also have a Tabo Mutle ANC Youth League NEC member. Uh, let's start with uh, you, Mr. Matebola, in your view on the voter apathy and certain challenges that face all political parties to prove that uh, the one is a lesser evil than uh, the other one. Uh, and uh, w everything that has been said about the ruling party, of course, uh, occupying headlines, saying that it's declared dead on arrival, it lost all, uh, it support it at NASRAC, etc., or being um, slow in economic transformation. Your view on uh, the election, electioneering that we're already seeing? <laughs> Um, good evening, everyone. I, I think the moral relativism analysis that we need to draw here, it is the pre-ANC and the post-ANC NASREC. You will understand that there was a huge opprobrium under President Jacob Zuma. But since NASREC, you can see the euphoria, you can see the growth, you can see the progression, you can see that the ANC is trying by all means to recover its ground in terms of the voters. Now. When you do the trajectory analysis in terms of confidence in the ANC, that is growing very fast. But they still have groundwork to do to prove themselves, to be able to say that they can take about two-thirds majority or anything. But I think the big issue here, Cindy, it is the narrative. You see, I'm asking myself where I'm sitting and I'm asking everybody and I say, but what will be the narrative of the EFF? because it has existed over time because of Jacob Zuma. COPE has existed because of Bulugwai. Now, what will be their key narrative that begins to break the eyes of the... Mr. Matebula, I'm afraid we, yeah, we're going to have to let you go. The, the audio and uh, the visual quality is not so great. Uh, we'll try and get, uh, uh, get you back into the debate. And Paul Matebula, political analyst via Skype, and we do apologize for that poor quality in audio and visuals. Tabo um, Mutle, Lekai? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very, very well. Hey, 2019 is here. Feel it. It's here. Uh, just judging by the confidence that we're seeing amongst the change of leadership within the ANC uh, structures and uh, um, narratives around the, the party, uh, self-correcting and uh, organizational renewal, how, how would you say it's going so far? Uh, everything is uh, going well so far. Uh, we need not uh, get ahead of ourselves. At this point, the NC is uh, readying itself uh, towards election, 2019 election. But uh, uh, we are quite aware that uh, for us to go and uh, campaign for people to go and vote the NC, we must uh, not jump one important step of ensuring that we we get those people registered so that when we come and ask them to vote for the NC, we vote for people who are uh, already registered. Therefore, the NC is very much aware it has established structures across the country, from the NET to BET, uh, structures are in place, uh, VD coordinators across the country, structures are in place, and volunteers are ready to actually engage in this uh, election year uh, 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 campaign or mood. But hasn't the, the EFF taken the wind out of your sails with the land expropriation 
uh, without compensation uh, narrative in that they, they, they are the ones who are claiming victory for it, at least um, even seeing the, the time of day or that uh, it, it has more gravitas? Claiming is the victory uh, will not uh, 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 get voters to vote for, for, for your party. Uh, the issues that have been debated in the ANC have been in the ANC for quite a long time. Uh, the resolution was taken in the conference that we need to expropriate uh, land without compensation. Whether people take advantage of that for uh, them to be popular, it's not what the ANC wants to achieve. We want to see the ANC implementing the resolution that are taken by the 54th conference. Uh, if others are just dancing to that tune, uh, they are doing that at their own accord. So we, we cannot blame them, we cannot criticize them, but the NC must remain focused in achieving or implementing the resolution taken by Congress. All right, please, that's, please stay on the line. I've, uh, let, I want uh, Mr. Matole and uh, Mr. Matlangwe here to engage you, that it cannot be uh, just a given anymore, that it will be a convincing victory. There still has to be a lot of groundwork that the, the ruling party needs to do. In your view, how do you see, especially the EFF, they came to disrupt uh, what was otherwise a given, you know, of a two-party state, if you like, and they have grown and they're making the right noise they have representation, that you cannot undermine their, their ability or influence of being kingmakers. Uh, let's forget the theory that all political parties are here to play games um, and assume that they are really here to economically empower the black people of Af uh, Africa. Um, the EFF comes across as a party that started on a sound promise, but somewhere along the way, uh, somewhere along the way to heaven. I think something happened on the way to heaven. And, uh, Was there a staircase? Uh, <laughs> yes, I think, uh, you know. So we don't know what went wrong with the EFF, but uh, I think somewhere along the line they lost, they lost their founding principles, they lost their uh, cardinal pillars, or maybe the cardinal pillars lost the EFF. And uh, it so happened that they aligned themselves with the racist DA, which is looked at across the divide as a racist party which is there to uh, advance the interests of white capital in this country. So they lost that momentum. But we have seen, I think, in the, in the last few months, the EFF picking itself up again, redeeming itself, and now it's, it's appropriating its original, original rhetoric. Yeah, but the uh, right of association, I mean, you can uh, 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 criticize any party, the DA, and fairly or fairly so, but uh, they, they've also managed to make inroads in growing their black voter base. No, this time it has made a very big dent on the EFF because the, the right of association should be looked at in, in context. But in the context of aligning with the racist DA, a party that has historically advanced the interest of the very same apathied oligarchs, people who have uh, perpetrated Holocaust against our people, it's a very big dent to the EFF. And people will, be very, will find it very difficult to forgive the EFF for that unless it makes steps very, very quick steps to recover its original momentum in terms of its... But the same pillars. could be said as of the ANC under the uh, government of national unity, that at the time, you know, national party members mm. uh, were absorbed in the party, all in the spirit of reconciliation and redefining the future and destiny mm. of uh, South Africa. So... In, in the, do you think that the, the uh, traditional voter base still votes based mm -hmm. on race, still votes based on largely our historical baggage? Well, it does. Uh, we still very much in this country vote on color. And uh, for some South Africans, partic particularly those who've suffered under apartheid and who felt the boot of apartheid on their necks, who were there in 1976, who understand the struggle songs, and who get a, a, a nostalgia um, when the videos of Hector Peterson and Kunta Kente are played.
those people will still see South Africa in black, green, and yellow. But for some, I think ideologies are changing. Uh, there's a shift in the, in the political makeup of this country. And maybe that's not such a bad thing because alliances must evoke in politics. And maybe it's not so bad that uh, the, the EFF sided with the DA in some things. And maybe it's not so bad that that marriage is going to collapse. We all know some marriages are good, but sometimes divorce is an option. So, so there's always a, a, a necessary contingent. There's always a necessary irritation. And I think the EFF has been that to the ANC. As much as sometimes we, we, you know, we would dismiss the EFF for joining or you know, a, a coalition of sorts with, with the, the, the DA, why did the ANC not implement radical economic transformation and expropriation of land for 23 years? Even when they had two-thirds majority, they still failed to do it. They had a president and two-thirds majority, and the president wrote beautiful poetry, but there wasn't implementation of radical policy. And I think the, e the EFF, as a child of the ANC, had to introduce those manifestos. And I think as a South African, and many of us should come to this point, we don't mind who brings the bread. The bread and the land should come. All right, Tabo Mute, uh, just to your response so that uh, uh, the, you know, you, you, you're now go going to have to woo and almost persuade the EFF uh, on many matters because you cannot discount their influence and ability to, to, you know, to either al allow an all-out majority or either way you, you need them. Would you agree? No, it, it depends. It depends. Uh, there, there will be engagement uh, with everybody uh, who agrees with the particular direction that the NC wants to take. So it can be the, the, the EFF that is persuaded uh, because where, where we don't agree with the, with the EFF, uh, uh, it shall be as such that we do not agree. But where they agree with the NC, uh, they must not, also not shy away from... Uh, saying publicly that they are agreeing with the ANC. So answer this question that when the, the ANC has been in power for 23 years, no implementation or slow on economic transformation, why must voters now uh, be persuaded differently that things will change? The, the ANC has been through uh, different challenges and stages in, since its existence. Therefore, the material conditions are the ones that are dictating what the NC needs to do for it to continue to, continue to be uh, relevant to society. Therefore, uh, it's not a, a genesis of some sort where, where there was a word and say, the NC could say, uh, let there be everything for everybody. It's a process. Mm. All right, Tabo Mutle, ANC Youth League NEC member, we thank you, Raulebo Khatata, uh, for joining us on the phone line. We'll uh, wrap it up here in studio, Mr. Matoli. Does the ANC have the ideological tools to implement the policies that have been passed by the 54th Conference? I don't think so. Does the ANC have the structure? to implement the policies that have been passed by the 54th Conference of the ANC? I don't think so. We have to be reminded of the wise words of Julius Nyerere, Mwarimu Julius Nyerere, who said that uh, white people are not prepared to fight and kill each other for the plunder of African resources anymore. White people or white capital is going to arm one black brother against another black brother. There will be no Holocaust for the white people anymore. It's going to be one black brother killing one black brother. What is happening now is the same strategy of divide and rule, which has been there for ages. All political parties in South Africa and other African countries are funded by the same masters. The reason why the ANC has been unable over the decades to implement the policies or to kickstart the second revolution is because the same masters who are funding political parties have got an agenda, and this agenda cannot be implemented by a radical pro-black party. The coming in of the AFF onto the scene serves an agenda, and the agenda is to appropriate a narrative, to advance a discourse. So the EFF is there to play a role, funded by the same master, 
to ensure that the black masses are numbed and hypnotized into sleep to prevent them from using violence against the land thieves. So the EFF is playing a role that would discourage black people from using violence against the land thieves. There will be no expropriation of land without compensation, 2018. There will be no expropriation of land without compensation in 2019. Black masses, the black masses will be enticed to go to the polls and vote for the ANC. But once they vote for the ANC, there will be no expropriation of land again. I have to let it out because I think black people have not had an opportunity after 1994 to look back at their history and understand what went wrong with their movement. Yeah, Mr. Machole, I appreciate your views, but we are out of time. And uh, very uh, briefly, Mr. Matlango, in the choices that voters have, number one, you have to register, be at least in uh, the system and uh, to dissuade from voter apathy so that there is a clear outcome either way. But in your view, based on what Mr. Matole was saying, that there is an agenda. If, you know, each political party is not just there for benevolence. Um, it is wanting to drive a particular narrative and it depends who will the, the voters decide on. And, and the voters must have the ability to look beyond the spin. Uh, Mr. Mangusutu Butelezi. Uh, has a strong saying that uh, money is the milk of politics. And the bigger your, your, your pockets, the bigger your campaign, and you might draw in a bigger crowd, a bigger traction. But South Africans must have the ability to look at not just the manifestos, but study the policy, study the history, not just the performances and the rhetorics and the slogans, but to really interrogate what could be done, what has been done, and what must be done and then to go to the ballot box and not just vote for those who brought in the big artists who went to the big stadia, but vote in line with the future of their children. I think South Africans must look beyond the spin shop and vote with policy direction in mind. All right, we're going to have to leave it there, Mr. Siso Matlango, Group Political Editor at ANN7, and our sister publication, and uh, Edward Mitole is uh, a political analyst, and I do hope that you, you all had equitable time, as uh, time is the enemy of live television, but you at home, thanks indeed uh, for your support. We'll take a break and see you shortly.